for a you need to find the power uh, find the correct power which is quite difficult you can use the approximate approximate methods that he told but they usually suffer from precision errors so you can do binary search. yeah yeah you can do binary search i agree but still this is much more easier solution this is a sieve okay so this is the next problem you have n plus 1 people sitting in, sitting in a circle say 1 2 3 so on up to n plus 1 so that is 1 and n plus 1 are, are also neighbors every day one person fights with the person and only one person surveys each fight so also the outcomes of fight between n2 persons are known so basically the input is n followed by a n plus 1 cross n plus 1 matrix ok so the n plus 1 cross n plus 1 matrix is just a boolean matrix 0 or 1 if it is 0 that means the, if that is if this matrix of i of j is 0 that means i will beat j if it is 1 that means j will beat i and you can assume the matrix is symmetric and what not you can assume all that the outcome of fight between a2 persons is known yeah since this adjacency matrix is given find out if there is a sequence of fights such that person 1 will survive till the end so this will obviously take n days because on each day one person will be eliminated so and uh, that is fights are only between adjacent people so any ideas start with the brute force name solution uh, you start with person 1 and uh, like see all the person 2 one can beat ok and like uh, keep searching simply to exhaust all the uh, enemy people ok so that way you can uh, find if, the, if you can't exhaust all enemy people then at least one uh, person 1 cannot win yeah I mean if one cannot beat anyone one obviously cannot win correct yeah like uh, when you keep going on like one beats suppose say 2 and uh, 2 beats some, some person Okay, so it keeps going on. Uh, basically, uh, DHS and uh, no, like, uh, see, I'm sorry, uh, start person 1, 1, beat some person say 2, okay. and uh, you find which person 2 beats. Uh, like, that, person that person 1 cannot, wait, going back. wait, 1 beats 2, you are trying to tell which person 2 beats. That person 1 also can beat, right? That's not necessary, but you have to consider that case, right? I mean, if you have any. But yeah, your starting idea is correct. I mean, instead of looking at what will be the first match schedule, you have to look at what will be the last match schedule. Basically, who one will beat, instead of what the first match, who, which two consecutive people played the first match. Yeah. So, think in terms of this idea. For the last fight, uh, see all possible people who one can beat. Okay. So, uh, now, uh, if one has to be all the people, then the problem is reduced to n people being there, and each one of these people have to be the last person to survive. Okay. So, so we can solve that sub problem. So, basically, you have n states, and uh, uh, the complexity will be like. Wait, wait, wait. I come to the complexity later. What is the solution exactly? Yeah. So, uh, suppose one can be 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, then uh, now group over, I just remove one from the uh, calculations. Now, 5, 6, 7 have to survive. Uh, I mean, uh, see, uh, if it, check if the sequence of operations so that 5 is the last person to survive among the n people. And the complexity won't be too bad. It will be n few or something. See. See, because um, there are n, n states and. See, 1 can beat 5, 6, 7 is okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, assume insert. The question is find out if there is a sequence, find the number of sequences. I mean, you can't find the number of sequences in this way, right? Yeah. But okay, for a solution, uh, let us see, told a correct solution. Uh, you have one. Uh, basically, draw an edge from i to j if i can beat j. The question reduces to from uh, DFS from one and check whether all, stay, all nodes are reachable. That does, uh, that does not necessarily mean one Correct. So? Yeah, so then you can have a... Uh, no, wait. Are you contradicting his solution or are you telling a solution uh, for... Uh, or are you telling counting cannot be done? Yeah, counting cannot be done by... Why? Because uh, there can be a... Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's why that is not the solution. Initially, only one is remaining. And so, 2 power n into n, what is the into n doing there? Survivor. Survivor. Yeah, the state is survivor, comma, subset of people. All the subset of people are survivors, right? I mean. No, the state is in this. I, I have subset of people and I want some particular guy in that subset to survive. Okay. So, how many guys are there to do this? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, there is a polynomial time solution. Okay, I'll. Uh, okay, so instead of what is my best first step, ask what is my best last step. So, let dp of i of j denote is there a way of organizing fights between people from i, I minus 1 to j plus 1 such that all the people from i to j die and i minus 1 and j plus 1 are remaining. You can write a recurrence for dp of ij. Why this works is, okay, uh, let me tell the state once again. So, assume first one beats person x, okay. So, look through all x and find the first person who one beats. So, assume that the last match is between one and x and one wins the match. So, now, what does the state reduce to? It reduces to 2 comma x minus 1 and x plus 1 comma n plus 1 because if x has survived till the last match then there couldn't have been any match between anyone from this set and anyone from this set because matches can only be between adjacent people so if if x has survived till the last round then there couldn't have been any match from this set and this set there couldn't have been any match like this so you can solve these two uh, sub problems independently. Is it okay? I mean, okay, I'll explain it again. So, only one is standing at the end. So, loop through all possible people who won as bet in the last round. So, assume you take an X. So, the last fight was between one and X and one won that fight. So now, if 1 and x were the last two survivors then everyone from 2 to x minus 1 must have died fighting among themselves and with 1 and with x only these people are allowed because 2 to x minus 1 cannot fight with anyone from this set because only adjacent people can have a fight so 2 to x minus 1 you have to solve independently and x plus 1 to n plus 1 also by the same argument they couldn't have had any fight with anyone from 2 to x minus 1 so you have to solve this also independently so you get two separate problems so the code will look something like I mean a polynomial version you can maybe optimize it for each x that one beats call uh, is, po is, po is possible of 2 comma x minus 1 and is possible of x plus 1 comma n plus 1 only if both of them are possible okay so okay I'll explain it more accurately so first you have a, everyone understood that the state is divided into 2 comma x minus 1 and x plus 1 comma n plus 1 is it okay so within this set what is the next question we must ask within 2 comma x minus 1 who is the last what is the last match scheduled in this set so assume that the y that person y in between 2 comma x minus 1 was the last person who had a match in this set and who got defeated by either 1 or x how can you proceed so basically iterate for all y in uh, between 2 and x minus 1 check whether at least one of 1 or x can beat the y if one of them can beat y we can as well schedule matches between y and either 1 or x whoever can beat that y so it will be reduced to 2 comma y minus 1 and y plus 1 comma x minus 1 or yeah 2 comma y minus 1 and y, y plus 1 comma x minus 1 so you can basically to solve this sub problem I write for all y which can be beaten by at least 1 or x and call whether it is possible for both 2 comma y minus 1 and y plus 1 comma x minus 1 
I'll lay the pseudo code just a second. That is go for go of i comma j for for y is from i to j if can beat of assume can beat is the matrix given in the input. So if can beat of i minus one of y or can beat of uh, j plus 1 comma y I mean consider the j plus 1 for n plus 1 j plus 1 is 1 and so on handle that that part so if can beat of i minus 1 of y or can beat of j plus 1 of y then uh, then uh, that is I will return true okay so red t equal to 0 uh, So go of i comma j will have a ret equal to zero. Ret uh, or equal to I mean this function will return a boolean. I'm just talking about if there is a possible, you can just easily modify this to count the number of solutions also. So ret or equal to uh, go of uh, i comma y minus one and go of y plus one comma j this is the pseudocode for that <laughs> if you want to count just put this as plus equal to I mean yeah something plus equal to and into here instead of or replace it by plus and and replace it by star you will get the count count of the number of possible yeah this is n cube right the state is n square order and transitions so n cube you can compute all the states and then iterate for each x which one played first with. But won't it be less than n cube because uh, won't it be less than n cube? Why? Because not they need not necessarily beat everything. I mean the i to j i need not i minus one need not necessarily be able to beat everyone from i to j. Okay. So like you don't need to like consider some cases. No. I mean in the worst case you can construct a case which takes n cube time can it will be diff okay, you can consider the case at least for counting the number of i'm not sure i mean of course for check whether we have a order whatever solution order m or order n square solution but counting the number of things you you do need order n cube okay okay the next problem is you're given a tree you can assume any suitable representation whatever representation suits you each node has a cost find an independent set of the tree which has maximum cost so what is an independent set of a tree an independent set of a an independent set of a graph is a subset of vertices such that there exists no uh, there doesn't exist any edge between any two vertices of the set in this set uh, okay So for this set, uh, one comma seven comma six is a independent set because uh, there doesn't e exist any edge between any or any pair of these nodes. Uh, also, one comma three is not an independent set because there is an edge between one comma three and so on. So there should not exist any edge between any pair of vertices in this set. So find T break. Okay. Uh, no, not be connect two separate components. No, I am not talking about just separate components. There must not exist even an edge between those two. Direct edge. Yeah, direct. Okay, direct edge. Yeah, okay. I'll just clarify it. Uh, one comma four comma seven is not an independent set. Yeah. Because one and four have an edge, one comma four comma seven is not an independent set. Although that doesn't exist an edge between. I mean, one comma four is a component, and seven is another component. These two aren't connected by just these edges, but still, it's not an independent set. Then you don't have the current node value. This code is changing. Else, if it is not taken, then you can add the value.